So first, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Miriam Schwab. Um, I'm from Jerusalem, Israel. This is one of my favorite views in Jerusalem. It's from the Mount Scopus area. For the last 10 years, I've been managing, I founded a WordPress development agency called Illuminea. Uh, we became one of the leading WordPress development agencies in Israel. Uh, and I've been doing that for the last 10 years. We've worked with many companies, startups, tech, finance, nonprofits. Um, me and my coworker, Rebecca Markowitz, we, we write a blog that I think uh, quite a lot of people know called WP Garage. We write less than we used to, unfortunately, uh, where we share our journey with WordPress and things that we learn. Um, I have organized WordCamp in Israel five times. <laughs> so luckily, WordCamp came up with a regulation that now you, you can only do two in a row, be an organizer twice in a row. So I'm taking a break from being the lead organizer, which I really need right now. Um, but hopefully, we'll be able to announce the next WordCamp in Israel soon. And you're all more than welcome to come. And recently, about a year ago, I founded another company called Stratic. Uh, we've developed and are launching now a web security solution, which I'll talk about um, later on in my talk. So aside from creating two companies over the last ten, two years, I've also created a bunch of kids. I have uh, seven. <laughs> so that's kept me busy. <laughs> And I don't know if we're going to have a lot of time for questions and answers at the end. I hope we will. Um, feel free to come up to me afterwards and ask me any questions, including about what does a crazy person do if they want to have seven kids, and how do you manage all of that? So <laughs> I'm happy to talk about that as well. All right, so let's talk about WordPress. So it's, security is something that we're all aware of when we talk about. Is it because WordPress is truly a target? Yes, it is. CMSs in general, like Joomla and Drupal, are attacked three times more often than non-CMS sites, and WordPress is attacked three and a half times more, so WordPress is a larger target. Why? If you're a hacker, you're looking for the best results for your hacking efforts, and because WordPress has such a large install base, it's worth it. If you find one vulnerability, you're going to find millions of sites that you can hack with it. It's also because, obviously, it's open source. That means that the code base is available to anyone, and also any vulnerabilities that are published are available to anyone. The other reason is that at any given time, it's estimated that 70% of all the WordPress websites that are available are, have some kind of vulnerability, which is kind of scary. And also, it's because, as we know, WordPress is a quite a user-friendly platform, and pretty much anyone can implement a WordPress site for themselves or for clients. But you can do that without having deep coding knowledge or knowledge of security. And so a lot of the sites that are, oh, thank you. A lot of the sites that are uh, developed and launched um, aren't necessarily done with those types of things in mind. And, and that's why they also might be vulnerable. So, and let's just get into the mind of hackers for a second. Why does a hacker hack? So one is just plain old vandalism. They just want to deface and cause damage same way someone will write on someone's wall. That's the same thing here. It's just for the satisfaction of saying, hey, I got into your site, and I made you unhappy. <laughs> the other is, of course, profit. Uh, many hackers get into sites um, in order to, let's say, redirect the site to affiliate links so that they can make money off of those ads, um, or to try to get credentials out of the site if they're stored within the site. Um, a more recent development of hacking is to create botnets. So what happens is um, hackers will take the resources from multiple websites and also sometimes, let's say, security cameras, but that's a different thing, bring them all together and create a powerful botnet that can then attack. And they will either use that to DDoS other sites or they'll actually sell it. So how does this happen? These days, hacking is automated. It used to be that someone would say, hey, I want to target that site, and so I'm going to do that. And it's no longer like that. There are bots that are scouring the web. The statistics related to how much bot traffic is hitting our sites is really quite mind-boggling. It's at least 50%, and some people say even more, of the traffic coming to our sites are different types of bots. Some are good bots, like Google, whatever. Um, and some are bad bots, like these bots that are looking to attack these sites and find vulnerabilities. Uh, WordFence, um, which is a great resource for security information, and of course, they have their plugin, which I'll talk about. Um, they did a survey to see why um, sites were hacked. Most people didn't actually know why, and that's definitely a problem. 
But those who did knew that it was because of a vulnerable and outdated WordPress plugin running on their site. So plugins are definitely one of the big weak points in our efforts to secure our sites. And today, or yesterday, uh, the count on the number of plugins in the repository is 50,000, over 50,000. So it's 50,000 potential vulnerabilities. Why? Because um, you can't possibly vet and audit every single plugin for, for security. And also sometimes they, the people behind them stop developing them. And it's just, it's a lot of different people who are creating a lot of different pieces of code that we are then taking and putting in our sites. Um, and that, that can create certain vulnerabilities. So uh, just vulnerability, this is, these are just some stats related to plugin vulnerabilities. 73% of all WordPress installations studied had unpatched vulnerabilities. 20% um, at, at one point there was a study done and 20% of the 50 most popular WordPress plugins were vulnerable. And the average CMS deployment has four plugins I don't know about you, but we often have more than that in the sites that we're developing. Another type of attack is brute force, uh, which is where someone, also a bot, hammers your login page and tries to get in by trying all sorts of combinations of usernames and passwords. So a side um, issue with this type of hacking is, aside from that they might eventually be able to get in, is that it can actually DDoS a site. We've seen that with clients where the brute forcing happening was so frequent and strong that just that call to the login form brought down their site. So that's pretty crazy. Now I put a picture of cupcakes because it's all so dark and I think we could use some colorful cupcakes in our life. <laughs> so here's some greenish bluish cupcakes and we're going to talk about DDoS. <laughs> um, DDoS attacks are when something like a botnet or some other large resource hammers a site with requests to view the pages to the point where the site slows to a very painful speed, and or the server crashes. Um, so how many of you guys have experienced any of those types of hacking or issues with your sites? Yeah, OK. Us too. Too many times. So I'm going to talk about solutions and different levels of solutions. There's different levels here for everyone. And, but before I do, I just want to talk a little bit about the security mindset. So as I mentioned, I'm from Israel. And in Israel, cybersecurity is, is very big. And um, through our own work, we just had to learn security uh, just by nature of the work. We had to keep our sites, our client sites secure. And plus, we are connected to that industry. And so we've learned a lot through the years about this. And one of the things that people think about security is that they can achieve this holy grail security. And if I like follow this checklist of things, then my site is secure and I, you know, I can rest at ease. It's not the case. Every time you build a wall, someone's going to find a way to get over it. You'll make that wall higher. Same story. It's a never ending cat and mouse battle. There's not much we can do about that. So because it's, there's no way to achieve 100% security, what we're aiming for is low-hanging fruit, the things that cover most of the issues. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So it's just, it's never going to be 100%. So we're going to do, we're going to talk about things that you can do to your sites that cover the vast majority of issues that you'll face. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about level one. And I truly believe, and in my experience, if you do these things, which are pretty easy to do, you are pretty covered. So here we go. Update. You must update everything. Just update. And I know that it might break things. I don't care. Do yourselves a favor and the entire internet a favor and update. And then you'll have to fix anything that breaks. That's just the nature of the beast. If you leave it vulnerable, your site can get malware, your visitors can get malware, and sometimes you might not even be able to recover. We've seen that with people who have come to us. So if you think it's difficult to update and remember to update, then just set it to do it automatically. You can add these, these, code, these bits of code to your wp-config file. There are plugins that you can install that will automatically update, um, especially the minor security core updates. Make sure that that's happening. Personally, in our company, we don't do the major updates as soon as they're released, like 4.8. We wait for 4.8.1. Um, but if you're going to forget to do 4.8.1, do 4.8 as soon as it comes out. Seriously, just, just update. Uh, if you have multiple sites under management, there are tools now that make it easy for you to like, keep an eye on things and see if things need updating. So Jetpack is one of them, Manage WP, and um, Infinite WP. So these are three options. And 
Jetpack doesn't cost for this. Manage WP and Infinite WP um, do. I truly believe that we need to invest in our web presence. If it's valuable to you, sometimes the product that costs is the one that you need to use. But in this case, you can use um, Jetpack uh, for this type of thing. But definitely, and you can set it to automatically update through Jetpack as well. So that's very useful. Backup. Like, I, I can't believe sometimes how many people I talk to who don't have backups set up. And yes, there are free plugins that you can use for backups, but there are a few problems with them, and I'm not saying you shouldn't use them, but you should just be aware. So one problem is that it's using your server resources a lot, and sometimes the backups might not be done to the end, and you aren't always, you can't be sure that they're reliable backups. And then when you need them, you find out that it's, it's corrupted or incomplete. Um, so maybe you don't pay for the dashboard to keep your plugins updated, because you can do it in other ways. Like, seriously, pay for a good backup tool. It will save you. Um, so these are two, VaultPress and BlogVault. We personally, in our company, we use BlogVault. Uh, it has additional benefits as well, these, these tools. Um, easy migration of sites from one server to the next, or even to a different domain. You can do test restores, which is excellent. So that's a way to see, let's say you were infected, which we've had this, uh, with malware. You need to find the backup that is clean. So you can do a test restore until you find the one that's clean. Um, no admin username. I know, like, we all kind of know this, but I'm just saying it. Just, like, no. Okay, so when you install WordPress, choose a different username. If you didn't, open another, like, have another uh, admin username that you've created and delete the admin one. And you can move any posts that you have to the other user, but just, like, no, because that makes it easy for the brute force um, attackers. Um, limit login attempts. Again, that's uh, related to the, br the brute force hacking. Um, if these types of uh, tools will identify if someone from somewhere is trying too many times to log into your site, that's not natural activity, and will stop them from doing so. So hopefully that will prevent them from finding out your username and password, um, even if it's weak. So that's, I would say, really important, and also related to the DDoS effect that I mentioned before. So this is um, WP Garage. I think we started running Jetpack Protect on it less than a year ago, and this is the number of times that Jetpack Protect has identified that there have been malicious attempts to um, attack our site. So it's happening, and we don't always feel it, but like, I'm so glad that 119,000 attempts failed, and so these types of tools can help with that. Passwords, obviously, we literally had a client whose password was I love my dog. Like, no, just don't use sentences and real words. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, even with an eight or a nine is still not secure, so just no. Um, I would recommend using a password generator uh, to create a complex one. Um, so a lot of people recommend using password managers. I personally, I am afraid of them because they get hacked. Um, I know people say you're ridiculous, you're too paranoid. So I have come up with an algorithm that I remember in my head in order to have a different password for each site. And I'm happy to explain that to you um, if you want. But basically, it's a pattern that changes for every site. And that's one way that you can have complex different passwords for each site and not need to use a password manager. Yeah, I'm a little bit crazy about that. So you, you can use password managers if you want. I just don't. Um, reliable hosting provider is key. So first of all, if you're not hosting on a $2 a month hosting provider, and they're a decent one, then they are looking out for your security, like on the infrastructure level. But even more important is their support, because something's gonna happen, like, very likely, and you're going to need support, and you want to know that someone good is on the other side. Over the last few years, we've been using SiteGround, and we've been very happy with their support. It's like magic, they respond instantly whenever we need, it's pretty amazing. So, um, but there's many incredible and excellent WordPress hosting providers in for the WordPress community, and just go with someone who's good, seriously. All right, next level security, rock star level. All right, so users. Make sure that you have a minimum number of admin level users. We've seen sites where there's like 20 users and they're all, they all have admin level permissions. Don't, okay? One, maybe two as necessary. Otherwise, just don't. And all user permissions in general should be as low as possible. So consider, does this person need editor level or author level? Um, you know, just make it as low as possible based on whatever they need to access in the back end of the site. 
and delete or demote unused users. So you can put them to subscription level or make them inactive or just delete them altogether, which is even better. Every one of these things is a potential gateway into your site. Plugins, same. Delete unused plugins. Every once in a while, do like a, a survey and audit of your site and see what is running in my site that I haven't been using and I don't need. And just delete. Okay? Be a little bit ruthless. And only install reliable plugins. So how do you decide or identify whether a plugin is reliable? So here's just a few ways. So in the repository, you have some data that you can access about every plugin. So in this case, you can see that this plugin was updated six months ago. So I would say that that's OK. Generally, maybe up to a year ago, it's OK. But the thing is, and it has a lot of active installs, but it's only been tested up to 4.7.5. It's not, it hasn't been tested on the latest version. That's a, that's a red flag. And I also look at the support section. I like to see if there have been responses to people's support questions. It's kind of a sign of whether the developer is still actively engaged and involved in, their, in this project. So in this one, there was a response two months ago, but before that, five months and a year and a year and over a year. That would also be a red flag for me. Two-factor authentication. Um, I think that this should be something that we're all using on pretty much everything. Definitely things like Gmail, Facebook, um, and, and your site. Uh, it's not so hard to set up, and you can do it for free. Uh, I think WordFriends is actually is not for free, but they have it um, built into their product, and Jetpack does have two-factor authentication for free. Uh, you can do two-factor authentication either by SMS or with an app on your phone. I prefer the app on my phone. I use Google Authenticator for two-factor authentication um, because I found that sometimes SMSs aren't reliable. They don't always arrive, and then you're kind of stuck. But there's an, there is something that I just uh, discovered about having the app on the phone, which is a disadvantage. I had to do a factory reset of my phone, and all of the authentication connections were lost, and I had to recover them, and that was not so fun. So that is a disadvantage. But otherwise, it's really easy with the app. You just you know, enter a code and you're in, so. But I would, I would highly recommend it. Okay, level three of security, out of sight. So I'm gonna run through it, um, because it's a little bit higher level, so those of you who are on that level will hopefully get it, or you can Google it a little bit more, or you can obviously ask me about it as well. So first of all, HTTPS. The reason I'm saying it's on a higher level is because you have to um, redirect, um, rewrite the URLs in your database installation in order to implement it from HTTP to HTTPS. But like, just do it. Every site now should have SSL. And with HTTP2, it actually runs relatively quickly, not like in the past. So aside from the security benefit, Google has been pushing it very hard and has made it one of the ranking factors in its algorithm. So if you want to give your site a little extra push in Google search results, I just you got to do it. I'm sorry, but you got to do it. This is really important. Uh, obviously, only use SFTP when you're FTPing into your server. Don't use regular old FTP. You know how you can edit actual like theme files in the back in the admin area of WordPress. So don't make that possible. If someone gets into the back end of your area, of your site in some way, you don't want them to have that kind of access to your files. That's just a horror. So you can um, disallow it with this code. Uh, you can implement firewalls like WordFence has. I recommend updating to PHP 7. We found that, well, it was, um, it's known that it has security benefits, but it also has speed benefits. We found that some sites that we've upgraded to PHP 7 are running substantially faster, and um, that's also a pretty big pain point these days, so you could get that advantage as well. SiteGround has a very useful tool where you can like, update just the environment of a particular site to PHP 7, um, so you can test it out and, and see how that goes. Uh, again, it might break things, but in my opinion, it's like we got to go there. Um, check file permissions on the server. You can find the recommended file permissions in the WordPress codex. Uh, OK, so database prefixes. This is like a bit of a debate in the WordPress community. If the database prefix is the default WP, does that make your site very vulnerable? So my opinion is as follows. When you're installing the site to start, I would change the database prefix to something more complex and not obvious. But if you've already got the site up and running with WP, I would say you can leave it. 
um, changing it is a pain. And uh, we found that that is not such a significant issue in terms of security. I'm sure there are people here who are going to disagree with me. That's just what I've seen and my opinion. So there you go. Keep your own computer clean and secure. Otherwise, you can send things up into the web um, and into your own website. Uh, you can use a CDN to try to protect against uh, DDoS attacks to some degree. It's not always effective. And also to make your site faster and, and accessible to people around the world and at a faster speed. Hiding the WP version, uh, my opinion is meh, meaning eh. That's what meh means, I guess. <laughs> That's my translation. Meh means eh. Like, some people say, like, eh, you can. I don't know. Uh, hackers can identify that your site is WordPress, and they're going to try to get in there anyway. So, but, eh, just so you know. And um, create WordPress security keys and generate salts and put them in WP config. OK. So that, I think, is, I mean, I know that was kind of a lot, but it's not rocket science. And it's the kind of things that I think we all can do to our sites. And really, those first, the level one stuff, if you do it, you're in really much better shape and in pretty good shape, actually. And as long as you've got backups, then if something happens, you can just go back to it. So um, even you know, beginner WordPress implementers or site builders or whatever we want to call them, or, or even developers, you can do those things for your clients, set them to automatically update. Yeah, they might come back to you six times going, oh, well, you know, my site is broken. But like, at least it's not hacked. And then it's really difficult to clean up. So, um, just some tools to keep an eye on your site as it's running and alive. So WordFence just uh, released a tool called Gravity Scan. You can do once-off scans on their site uh, to try to find malware and things like that. And they also have a paid service for ongoing scans. Securi, the same story. Securi is very well known. Um, also, we'll scan your site and find things. We haven't found that it always finds everything, by the way, but that was just us, and maybe that was a fluke. Google Search Console is my, by far my favorite tool for this. First of all, it's free. So and in any case, if you care about how your site is doing online, you really should be connecting it to Google Search Console. You just need to authenticate it. And then you get data from Google that's like gold, seriously, and data that you don't get from Google Analytics anymore, like keywords um, that people use to find your site. But aside from that, Google wants the web to be a clean place. They don't want malware-infested sites in their search results. So as soon as they identify any sign of anything shady going on, on your site, you will get mm, like 1,000 emails from them. But that's great, because you will know immediately if there's an issue. So if you don't want to pay for these other services, really, just connect to Google Search Console. And, and let, you know, we can rely on Google for this. They care about this kind of stuff. So, so do that. Um, Jetpack has their monitor tool, which is excellent. We were using paid monitoring tools, which would report downtime to us. And the results with Jetpack's monitor tool are just as good, just as fast, and free. And that's obviously a sign of something going wrong with your server or your site. So it's very useful. And I would um, implement that. By the way, with Jetpack, when it first came out, I was like, how can they do this? You know, they're like trying to force this on everyone. And I don't want a giant plugin that does a 1,000 things. In the end, we use it for all sorts of things. <laughs> they, they won over us. It's very useful. It's got some very useful functionality. OK, so that was like standardish approaches to security. If you do these things, you're in a pretty good situation. Definitely have Google Search Console, at the very least, keeping an eye on your site. Now I'm going to talk about completely rethinking security. So as I mentioned, for the last decade, I've been in the WordPress development um, industry. And I've seen a lot. And we've suffered from many things along the way related to security. And we've learned a ton along the way. Um, but over the last few years, we found that it was becoming more time consuming to keep our clients' sites alive and well. Um, instead of being able to build the websites for the clients you know, and progress with projects, we would find ourselves spending a day or two or sometimes a week uh, you know, trying to fix something that happened, fighting DDoS attacks. We had one client that was on stage pitching to investors, a cyber company, and then their site was DDoSed. Nightmare, OK? I have many more gray hairs with different web situations, names on them. So I've been thinking about have so a lot of these approaches have to do with pushing back against the status quo. And I started learning about a new approach to web development called serverless. Have any of you, are any of you familiar with serverless at AWS Lambda? 
crickets. Yes, but that was me. Like, I also hadn't heard of it. It's really fascinating and really interesting, and I personally believe that it's the future of web development. Basically, it's called serverless because instead of running a dynamic server all the time to process, like just waiting in case someone needs to process some kind of dynamic functionality, it's essentially static sites, like in the 90s, kind of. It's like we're coming full circle, circle but the dynamic functionality runs on demand and then shuts down. And that's called AWS Lambda. I recommend that you guys just look it up and start learning about it. It's really interesting. Uh, Microsoft and IBM also have their own versions of uh, serverless. Um, this started only like three years ago. So the benefit of going serverless is that there's no database and there's no dynamic server running. So all of that attack surface, all of those vulnerabilities are actually eliminated. They're just not there. And these sites run faster because they don't have to do database queries for every page, and they're more scalable. So many sites are going this way, like Coca-Cola is migrating sites to serverless approach, but it's very expensive, very resource intensive, and WordPress is, is just it's such a great option. If you need your site to get results for you, generate leads, generate traffic, generate business, anything like that, WordPress is key. So how do we marry these two worlds together? And I came up with this idea for the new company that I founded called Stratic. Um, and there's another company out there that's doing something similar called Shifter, which you may have heard of. So I'll explain to you how it works. Um, basically, we disconnect the dynamic code of the WordPress site from the rest of the web. Um, and we put the WordPress site behind authentication. So only site owners can access that site, um, but no bots but they can manage the site as usual. So there's no learning curve. Marketing people can still update content and all that stuff. Everything is the same. You can add plugins. As an agency owner, I don't want anyone telling me what I can and cannot do. So all of that's the same. Then you deploy those changes with one click of a button. Oh, and by the way, the bots that are trying to access the site cannot, so they go somewhere else. Bye-bye, bots. And <laughs> so then you can deploy the changes that you've made, and they get deployed as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, essentially the front end of the site. So site visitors are visiting an exact clone and replica of your WordPress site without the underlying vulnerabilities and issues. And these bots, they're there again. They're trying to find the WordPress vulnerabilities or the known open source vulnerabilities, and they can't hack them because they have been completely eliminated through this approach. And these sites, as a happy byproduct, they're also faster, and they scale when hit by DDoS attacks. DDoS attacks need much more resources to take it down or if hit by a lot of traffic. So we're just actually launching now. We're very excited. I've been toiling and sweating and crying over this thing for a year, but it's now working. And so I, we would lo really love to talk to you guys about it and see if you, you know, are interested and if we can show it to you and also get your feedback, because um, I, I know that this is something that I want for my agency to solve my own pain, but we'd love to hear what you guys think as well. Um, so, so that's like a completely different approach. It's very new. It's very unique, but um, it marries the best of these two worlds of serverless and the awesome world of WordPress, which we love and which is so great for all of us and for our clients and for ourselves. So um, that's, that's it. So thank you. This is a picture of me and the Mona Lisa bonding. It's such a hilarious experience. So yeah, that was the closest I could get, and I feel really close to the painting now. So thank you. If anyone has any questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miriam. I'll be passing this microphone back to you, but uh, I think we're going to get some questions through. Are our mic runners ready? Yeah, excellent. Okay. Now, we, the microphone set up in here is that we've got a couple of um, mics on stands down towards the front of the aisles. Uh, gentleman there, you're sitting next to a mic stand. Could you give us a wave, please, so that people could... Uh, yeah, that's it. Just that chap there. He's got a microphone. And the other end of the row as well. There's one there as well. So if, you want, if you're near the front, we've got a question for Miriam. Pop down to one of those. And towards the back, we've got some runners as well. So do we have a question from the floor? Over there, sir. Yes, please. Hi. Hi. Great talk. Um, one question about the serverless approach. How do you handle with like comments? And Very excellent question, which I'm sure a lot of people have. Yes, perfect. Um, discuss and Facebook comments. And for forms, at the moment, we're using third-party forms, but uh, we plan to develop an integration with the regular WordPress uh, forms, like Gravity Forms, which I love. So it has to work for me <laughs> and everyone else um, through a proxy. Uh, but at the moment, because we have such an initial product, so it's uh, discuss and Facebook uh, comments. 
which in any case, we found a lot of our clients want to prevent spam and just make it easier to ma manage co comments. And it also is actually kind of runs faster, so. And oh. we have another one over there. Yes. Uh, you, man you mentioned the authentication for the client. Yeah. What kind of authentication is it? Like, is it a password or is it like a token? Like, what, what is the process for, for the client? How, how is So it's a very good question. So at the moment, it's a username and password. Um, again, because we're just like, we're la launching this minimal product, but the idea is to make it a little bit more complex. But one of the things that I actually, I forgot to mention about security is there's always this battle between user experience and security. So you don't want to limit your users too much. Um, so our goal is to find a balance where it's highly secure. We, we might likely will use Amazon's um, authentication services because they're very high quality and integrate well. Um, we're building on, on AWS. Uh, so, but at the moment, yeah, it's the username and password. Uh, does it mean that uh, the user, the act actual admin, should, uh, should type in its credentials two times? Yes, like exactly. It's two time credential. It's possible that down the line we'll remove that, but I, I think it's worth the security benefit just in case that they log in once to our system and then they log in again to their WordPress installation. Hey, do you plan to make it one login system or something? It's possible. Right now, what we really need is user feedback. And so if that's a big pain point where it's two steps, then we would definitely consider it. Um, but at the moment, it's, it, it will continue to be two steps. And, you know, and maybe we'll add that to the roadmap. OK, thank you. Thank you for your question. Is that a person there? Yes, I'm a person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. You, you put up the statistics from WordFence about vulnerabilities, but mm -hmm. one of the things that wasn't on there were the users, as far as I could see. Which so, users? Uh, the end users of the site, the admins, for example. Meaning being a vulnerable point? Yeah, exactly. So my question is about social engineering and sh uh, social exploits. What do you do to educate clients on phishing, on uh, what emails they should respond to, which websites are actually real websites versus clones of their admin? That's a really good question. So social engineering is definitely a threat, and we ourselves, even us as the site developers, can be a weak point. Um, in the level of like risk for our clients, it's actually pretty low. At least that's what I found over the last 10 years. If we were a bank, like no question. There would be a lot of education going on. We do try to educate our clients in general about like safety online, um, in general terms, and they often ask us questions. Uh, you know, don't click on anything that looks even remotely suspicious. Look at the URL. That's that's basically the main suggestion. Look at the URL. If it says Facebook.com, it's not Facebook. You know, um, but it, it's in the the whole point here is like do the most important things, and actually that is a pretty low low-level thing for our clients, and we can always restore a backup if we have to. So, uh, yeah. Cool. Thanks. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, the obfuscation of the VP admin suffix, uh, oh. I, I think that uh, it identifies any site as being a WordPress site should not, not that's a very good point. Like uh, changing the login URL yeah, by the ending. I'm very surprised that it doesn't come as uh, out of the box by WordPress. So I do recommend it, but um, what we found is we started implementing it on sites, and then we, we had an issue, and just to fix the issue, we stopped, and it didn't make any difference that we put back the URL because as long as we were limiting login attempts and we made sure that the clients had strong passwords and like what basically whatever I said, it was okay. But yeah, it's an easy thing to do. Very good point. And you can do that, like create a different uh, login URL for your clients. It's just one more way to um, what's it called? Security through obfuscation, or I can't remember the term. But yeah, thank you. Good point. Oh, there's another person. I feel like I'm looking into Hello. the sunset or something. Oh, <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Tom Noel. Um, there are a lot of things that people do to try and improve the security on their websites that are good intention, but maybe aren't so great for their sites, um, yeah. and that people have spread online. Um, what do you think is the worst, the sort of things that are quite popular that a lot of people might want to do that 
can actually really destroy the security of this site very oh, quickly. That's a really good question. I've read so many ridiculous things, really, some really ridiculous things, but I'm, I'm stumped right now. If I can get back to you. But yeah, it's really important. It's kind of like the world of search engine optimization as well, where you'll read things and they're like, if you do this, you're going to do great. So the same here, if you do this, like, don't go overboard. You'll find these checklists of like 36, 40, 50 things to do to your WordPress site to make them secure. So first of all, you'll likely end up messing things up in a painful way. You don't want to ruin your own user experience. And just try to be smart. And also, I mean, this is based on 10 years of experience, so feel free to like, not have to go through the pain to learn it. Um, and, but you can also, you'll learn as you're going along like what really makes a difference and what just is too painful to do. Kind of like changing the URL. We just found that it was like messing things up too much and taking like more time than we want to, and then when we stopped doing it, it was fine. So, you know, you find you figure it out for yourself, I guess. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, you put um, the uh, the dashboard of uh, WordPress behind an extra login. Mm. Why not an IP whitelist? so that you don't have to log in twice? Good question. It comes to the user experience thing. Like, we're all running around a lot, mm -hmm. and so are our clients. Like, for example, our tech clients and our startup clients, they're in Tel Aviv, and then they're in San Francisco, and then they're in Europe, and their IP address is changing all the time, and then they would be in touch with us all the time to, like, update it, or someone in their office. It's like, it's a cost-benefit thing. Again, if we were a bank, Probably, but for most of our clients, it's not worth that inconvenience. It would be too frustrating for them. That, that's why, essentially. Okay. Thank, Thank you for you. your question. <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh, I have a question regarding database for serverless. How do you plan to handle it, or how does the user get a backup or something for serverless? How do they get a backup of the serverless or, site? I mean, for the database. Ah, so the original site is in existence. And so that is continuously being backed up as well, just in case something happens because things happen. Uh, so that's continuously being backed up, as well as the static site. And the, the ben benefit of that is that if something happens to the, the real WordPress site, the static site continues to exist. And also on WordPress, we can always have um, redundancies. So you know, if something happens to one static version, we can easily quickly point to another one. So you can end up with like a whole bunch of possibilities if anything goes wrong. But the real WordPress site is constantly being backed up just in case. But, but where does the database stay? Is, is it in, as an RDS instance or uh, how? As a what? As an Amazon RDS instance or? Oh, the databases are? Separated. What's that called again? Is that what you just said? Amazon RDS. RDS, yes. Yes, it's RDS. Exactly. So that's the other advantage, that if something happens, we can just reconnect it to um, the files. OK. Perfect. OK. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. I'm Phil. Just Hello. on the right. Um, I have a question about the REST API. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, it's uh, enabled by default in WordPress. Um, that it's on by default. Um, yeah. You can easily, uh, for instance, list the, the user in your WordPress install. Uh, you, would you have any uh, um, uh, experience or advice about the API? Should I uh, disable it? Oh, so or you're is saying that a major that, right. uh, issue? That the REST API could be a, a vulnerability, right? So for a long time, we would, let's say, turn off the XML RPC site, uh, file. We would disable it. We were suffering too much from it. But then that stopped being an issue for various reasons, so we stopped doing that. With the REST API, because it's so new, so far we haven't found that it's a strong point of attack. But I feel like we're going to find a day, like we did with XML RPC, where some kind of botnet or something, or just general hackers identify this as a great place to attack, and will, and we're all going to suffer from it. And then at that point, we're all going to consider disabling it. In the meantime, it seems OK. We generally don't disable or turn things off that have an advantage until they become disadvantageous. So that's just us. But if you're not using it, it's not adding any benefit, then yeah, maybe consider it. It's definitely going to be an issue. Like, in my opinion, it's just a matter of time, like everything.
Okay, it's the wall that just keeps going. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Try and squeeze in one more. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, no, of course. It's not even a question. It's a statement. I've seen a lot of uh, WordPress security uh, talks, and this one absolutely was one of the most comprehensive ones. So congratulations. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Positive, you know how it is if you have clients, like they can all love you and then one says that they hate you and you're like, everyone hates me. So that means a lot to me, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.